The views and opinions expressed on this program are not necessarily those of this station, JVC Broadcasting Management, or its sponsors. Good morning. Hello there, everyone. Good morning, Long Island. This is Mitch Goldberg. You're listening to Money in the Morning. This is a show about the markets, about personal finance. Ultimately, you work hard for your money, and the show is about your money working hard for you. That's that's the goal. So we go through the markets, we do all these important things, but then we talk about how does this work for you? What does this mean for your situation? What should you be doing? Or what should you stop doing? Should you be doing something else? Or are you just fine the way you are and you need a little extra confidence to know that? So these are the questions that we go through and I take real world experiences of being a financial advisor for over 30 years and I I just take that stuff, everything I've learned and I regurgitate it here in the show just for you with the hope that I'm speaking um, in a way that makes sense and in a way that makes makes your decisions um, better. The futures are down roughly 350 points, Dow futures. S&P futures down about 1% as well, uh, down 38 points. Dow futures are down 1%. NASDAQ futures are down about 1.2%, down 148 points. Oil is up slightly at 59, up 59 cents at 76.93 in West Texas Intermediate. And the U.S. 10-year Treasury, this, if you want to know the real culprit for the down market this morning, the 10-year Treasury is at 3.896. Let's round that up to 3.9. We are ever so close to breaching 4% again. The key here is this time we breach 4%. We stay above 4%. Mortgage rates are tied to the 10-year Treasury. So just to follow up on my riff from last week, I wouldn't be surprised to see mortgage rates go back to the 7% handle pretty quickly. And this is happening literally just before the home selling season. (laughs) Um, We're going to take a quick look at some of the top news today. And the big news that's really guiding the market lower, if you want to look at it as far as individual stocks go, Walmart and Home Depot, two of the heaviest of heavyweight retailers. These are the biggies. So these companies are just absolutely getting crushed this morning. We'll go through Walmart first. Um, Walmart's earnings were actually pretty good. Their revenues were very good, beating the street. Their forecast was tepid. Um, Walmart has a pretty good handle on consumers. Consumers stretch. They're still getting hurt by inflation. Um, in a way, I could say it's a negative when Walmart goes up because that's where people go to save money when they don't feel confident about the economy. Um, and then Home Depot. Home Depot's numbers are weaker than expected, similar situation, uh, consumer not as strong as had been hoped. Their holiday season at Home Depot is not great, but there's some other things going on with Home Depot. The home selling business is just so off right now that, you know, people aren't buying new homes, they're not moving into existing homes, uh, homes that are new for them. They're not spending on upgrades and carpet and do-it-yourself projects, things like that. Uh, their forecast is a bit tepid. They are taking a billion-dollar increase to their expenses to raise their average minimum wage or to raise their minimum wage to 14 an hour. Um, so they've got a lot of things to not celebrate at the moment. But these stocks have been up a lot. They have been winners. So the fact that These are both down at the same time. They're both big components in the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the S&P 500. That, you know, that's enough to, to pull markets down. And on top of that, the worries about inflation. And ever since a few weeks ago, we had that big jobs report of 517,000 new jobs created. Ever since then, the feeling has, the, the, consensus view has switched from the Fed getting to the end of its rate hiking cycle to 
continuing to having to continue its rate hiking cycle. And now instead of thinking we'll just get two more quarter point hikes, we're starting to think in terms of a half a percent hike coming up, another half a percent, a half a percentage point hike coming up, the one after that, because, you know, the Fed is the Fed's interest rate hikes are just not slowing demand enough and bringing down prices enough. The fact that the 10-year Treasury at just hit 3.9%, folks, the fact that that is moving up tells you that investors are starting to factor in inflation that will last, you know, the, the rate of inflation we have will last longer, not just start to peter out at the middle to end of this year, that it'll last longer. The former thinking was the Fed would maybe pivot and start to cut rates at the end of 23. We're pushing that back to 24 as of now. All this is subject to change because you could get a couple of um, cold numbers in inflation and all of a sudden people are back to thinking the Fed's going to cut rates and the market will start to rally and inflation's under control. So the situation remains fluid. That's why I think it's important to stay on top of it. What I don't think is important, though, is to make rapid, sudden changes to your financial and investment plans. And that's something that I really like to bring the focus to. So I don't make... I mean, I'm just telling you my own experience personally. I don't make drastic changes, and I typically don't make changes at all based on what the stock market's doing or what the futures are doing. We, I mean, if you remember going into the pandemic, we used to see the Dow futures down over a thousand points sometimes. We, we had you know down limit down five percent moves limit you know down in all the major averages during those days it's important to keep a cool head and it's important to not make reactive actions so that's what we're going to talk about and i also want to give you some warning about a trend that i see that has gotten really really hot lately so with all that said, and me just basically bringing the mood down to the start of a shortened holiday week, and I hope everybody had a lovely three-day weekend, what should you do? The first thing you should do is nothing. Assess the situation. Assess your own situation. If you're worried about a stock going down today, my opinion is you're, you're doing it wrong. So see what you have. See what kind of cash you're going to need over the next year as far as your investments go. And maybe you shouldn't have as much in the market. These are the kinds of things that we need to discuss. So let's get into some nitty-gritty. One trend I see, and uh, we might not have enough time to finish the whole riff on this, okay, <laughs> is I see these very popular funds attracting a lot of money lately. And these are ETFs and funds that are paying you know, 10, 11, 12% income. And some of you just perked up and were like, wow, I'd like to know more about that. What is that? Okay. And some of you probably will know what I'm talking about. There is just a plethora of covered call uh, strategies that are, that are, have been introduced to investors and that are raising a lot of money. Um, a lot of investor cash is flowing into them. I just want you to know to start with that if some if the ten year treasury is paying nine you know three point nine percent and you're getting over ten percent on an investment, you have to know that you are taking a lot of risk to do that. We're gonna get more into that. And I'm going to talk to you about exactly what these covered call strategies are. They're option strategies, which are predominantly sophisticated products and poorly understood by the vast majority of people. You're listening to Money in the Morning with Mitch Goldberg on 103.9 FM LI News Radio. We thank you for joining us. We have a lot of good stuff to talk about. Stick with us. We'll be right back after these brief messages. All right, we 
are back. Thank you very much for joining me this morning. We've got a lot to cover today. Uh, Dow futures are off 330 points, about 1%. S&P futures are off 37 points, uh, about nine tenths of a percent. That's actually, believe it or not, a little bit of an improvement in the last 10, 15 minutes or so. NASDAQ futures are off 1.19%. Um, a little bit of an improvement in the futures, but the 10 year remains firmly entrenched at 3.9%. And just to give you an idea of where bond yields are, the, um, now the one year T bill, just, you know, the, when, when the U.S. government borrows money, it issues treasury security. So the treasury department issues bonds, IOUs, okay? And the bonds are called treasury securities and long-term treasuries are called treasury bonds. We call midterm like seven, 11 years, eight years treasury notes and a year and under, we call them T-bills. So the one year T-bill, which is a treasury bond, is now over 5%. So you can get 5% now from a one year. Um, there, there is nothing safer than a T-bill in terms of default risk. Okay? And it's like people say, well, what about CDs? I don't want to imply that CDs that are FDIC insured are not safe and stable. But CDs invest their money in treasuries, which you could just buy the treasury. And a six month, uh, T bill continues to hover in the low fives and the two year is at 4.68. So the whole curve of bonds is moving up and it's moving up a lot. And this is taking the wind out of the sail of the stock market. If you were thinking, Hey, I want to get I see a stock given in a 4% and I'm getting nothing in the bank and bond yields are paying, you know, one and a half percent, that 4% on a dividend of a company that I've heard of, of a stock that I'm familiar with sounds very appealing. But now that you're getting 5% from a six month T bill and 5% from a one year T bill, that 4% dividend yield doesn't sound as appealing plus the 4% dividend yield on the dividend, that's been going down. So now it means that bonds are perceived as such a good place to put some money that investors, you know, it's competition to stocks, finally. So now bonds are attractive. We used to use an expression, Tina, there is no alternative when it comes to stocks because bond yields were paying basically nothing. You were getting zero in the bank. You were getting zero to buy a bond fund. But now there are alternatives. And 5% for a one year, super safe, guaranteed, is a pretty good deal for a lot of you. And in New York, you don't have to pay state income taxes on that, which makes it even a little bit more attractive. So if you're buying in a non in a taxable account, but even for a, uh, you know, if you're buying these 5% in an IRA tax equivalent, you know, for a lot of you, that's like getting 8, 9% compared to a taxable account. So there is competition for stocks and that is pulling the market down and it's making the situation where people are saying, I don't want to buy stocks now. I'd rather buy a T-bill and wait and see what happens with the economy, with inflation. The charts are starting to break down in the stock market. The economy does continue to pipe along and remain strong. And we're hoping that the Fed could pivot or at least pause its rate hikes, leave the economy in a low growth mode with low inflation, we call that Goldilocks. That's an ideal situation for stocks. Unfortunately, that I, that thought process has gone out the window for now. And that's why the market just goes down. There's other reasons, but though I'm giving you the broad strokes. You could definitely talk about this with your friends. I promise you, you will sound like you know what you're talking about because you do know what you're talking about. You actually, you, you know, <laughs> that's what you need to know. So these covered call funds, uh, there, there's a whole bunch of them. And basically, a call option gives somebody the right to buy a, a, a contract to buy a stock at a certain price. 
So if you have a stock that's 40 and you own the contract that says you could buy the stock at 40 and the stock goes to 80, you've made a fortune on your contract. You've made a lot of money. Um, but if the stock goes down, you'll lose money in the contract and you'll lose all of your money if you don't sell it before it expires. So options have an expiration date. Now, these are risky securities without getting into a whole dissertation on what they are because we only have a couple of minutes left. There are products called in, you know, income funds or capital income funds, covered call strategies that are using what I consider very uh, uh, hard to understand, very esoteric investment strategies. And they're being marketed to the public, to, to you, uh, like these are good everyday average investments. And they happen to pay, you know, 10% and they're investing in blue chips or dividend paying stocks. And you're like, what could be wrong with that? Now, every couple of years in my career of over 30 years, I see these covered call strategy funds come out. They get popular. They don't do well. They fall out of favor. And then somebody says, I built a better mouse trap. I'm giving it a new name and it's reintroduced like it's a whole new concept. But I, I promise you it's the same old, same old. So if you sell the covered, if you sell a call against a stock you have, it's a covered call. What you're really doing is you're selling the upside of your stocks or individual stock for very little money. But you're, you're left with all the downside of a stock, but very little upside of a stock. So that's why I think just on the fundamentals, these strategies are poor. And you're in every case that I've seen over the long term, you would have been better off in a portfolio of dividend paying stocks, dividend achievers kind of stocks. Those are the kinds of companies that raise their dividend every single year. High dividend strategies. There are other ways to shoot for income, but it's typical of the 50 plus crowd. I'm over 50, so I'm, I'm not insulting anybody, but I see the 50 plus crowd, especially the 70 plus crowd gets desperate for income and they feel like I don't want to sell down my portfolio because I want to make it last. So if I could just get more income out of it, that'll be great for me. And they go into these kinds of strategies. Their track records are kind of poor. The strategy is not something that people really understand when they go into. They're sold on all the positives, but not on the risks. And even though you're getting the income out of it, you take the income, but in most cases, your, your original investment is often down a lot. And if you reinvest it all, you still have, you know, you've basically, in, for the most part, only made a little bit or kept flat or a little bit better than flat. And there are plenty of other investments <laughs> that you would have been better off in. So I find that these are suitable for very few people giving you an esoteric option strategy for the mass market, the retail investor market is a dangerous thing. I'm surprised that people don't have to sign some kind of disclosure agreement or get the options clearing corporation information that you same as you'd have to get as if you opened up an options account. By the way, I'm an options uh, sales supervisor principal. I'm pretty well versed in the world of, of options. So I, I so, you know, I'm, I'm coming to you from experience and from technical expertise too. So beware of these strategies. I know the very high yield is incredibly appealing. But I don't want you to be lured by really good bait and bite into a hook that might not be good for you. By the way, you can't invest directly into a index, but you can invest in a security that tracks or mimics an index. And I think that wraps up the show, especially because we hear the music. So stay tuned. We've got lots more good stuff coming to you every morning this week. You're listening to Money in the Morning with Mitch Goldberg. Thank you for joining us. You are listening to 103.9 FM LI News Radio. Stay tuned. We've got a lot of good shows coming up today. And I We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.
Securities and investment advisory services are offered through Next Financial Group Incorporated, member of FINRA SIPC. Client First Strategy is not an affiliate of Next Financial Group Incorporated. All the views expressed are those of Mitchell Goldberg and Client First Strategy and not those of Next Financial Group Incorporated. Views are general in nature and not intended to be investment advice. Any discussion of individual security should not be construed as a recommendation or solicitation by our presenters. Next Financial Group Incorporated does not provide tax advice. The views and opinions expressed on this program are not necessarily those of this station, JVC Broadcasting Management, or its sponsors. Good morning. Hello there, everyone. Good morning, Long Island. This is Mitch Goldberg. You're listening to Money in the Morning. This is a show about the markets, about personal finance. Ultimately, you work hard for your money, and this show is about your money working hard for you. That's that's the goal. So we go through the markets, we do all these important things, but then we talk about how does this work for you? What does this mean for your situation? What should you be doing? Or what should you stop doing? Should you be doing something else? Or are you just fine the way you are and you need a little extra confidence to know that? So these are the questions that we go through and I take real world experiences of being a financial advisor for over 30 years and I I just take that stuff, everything I've learned and I 